everyone and welcome back to Nature Lab. This month we have been exploring the world of herpetology with the help of the Wild Center's resident reptiles and amphibians. Today we are enlisting two of our herps to help explain one of the main differences between reptiles and amphibians, their life cycle. I'm here with Hatch the Snapping Turtle who's going to walk us through the life of a reptile by telling us a little bit more about his life. Well, okay, I think it would be best to start with my earliest memories back as an egg with all my siblings in the nest. Now, my parents aren't the most nurturing of animals, so they thought digging a pit in the sand and leaving the eggs there to fend for themselves was a smart move. Go figure. Anyway, I got lucky. These nests aren't very protective, so usually 80% of something of the eggs don't even end up hatching, having been eaten and such. After a few months, I earned my namesake and hatched for my egg, and immediately scurried to the nearest body of water. Oh, look at us all. So adorable. I may look pretty fierce now, but as a baby, I was susceptible to being eaten by pretty much any animal bigger than me. It was pure primal instinct that drove me to seek out a lake or pond. There, I knew I'd be safer than out in the open, and I would be able to find enough food to grow into the fearsome turtle I am today. Reptiles like me don't do that fancy metamorphosis so that we can live on land. Many of us can live on land or in water right out of the gate. As a snapping turtle, I prefer to spend almost all of my time in the water eating small animals and camouflaging against my surroundings. I really only leave the water when it's time to lay my own eggs. Ah, the circle of life. Now that we've gotten a glimpse into the life cycle of one of our resident reptiles, let's jump over to the other class of animals studied in herpetology, amphibians. We're gonna have Cantaloupe, an American toad, tell us about her amphibian upbringing. Cantaloupe, take it away. Oh, thanks, Corey. Well, my life began at a pond as a tiny little egg. One of thousands, actually, and we were all strung together in kind of a jelly that kept us from drifting apart. Oh, look, look, there we are. Oh, I see Joshua, Brenda, Brenda too. Oh, she was my favorite sister. Calvin, Aaron, Rebecca, Jeremy. Well, okay, okay, I won't go through all of their names. You know, not all of my siblings make it past this stage. Anyways, but the ones that do, like me, emerge from our eggs after about two weeks. Maybe a bit earlier if the water was warm, but it was a long time ago. I can't remember. Then came the tadpole phase, and I was so awkward. I didn't have any arms. I didn't even have any legs. Just that big old head with little gills and a long tail. I remember staying close to the edge of the pond and having to hide around aquatic plants so that, you know, fish wouldn't eat me. Ah, the good old days. My siblings and I were fast growers, though, and within just a few weeks, I had grown arms, legs, lungs, and eardrums, and I finally grew out of that tail. I finally looked like a real toad about two months after I hatched, I think. You know, think of metamorphosis as my embarrassing tween ears. We don't really talk about it that often, let alone go through photos. After metamorphosis, I looked like a toad, but I was still comically small. Most new toads are actually smaller than a penny, you know, myself included. It took a few years of forest living and bug eating to grow into that beautiful size I am today. Quite the glow up, if I do say so myself. Thanks again to Hatch and Cantaloupe for that first-hand look into herp life cycles. We can observe through their two stories that there are fundamental differences between reptiles and amphibians, like the metamorphosis stage in amphibian life, but there are also a lot of similarities, like starting life off as an egg and living on both land and in water. Tune in next week for our final exploration into the world of herpetology. Thank you all for coming and exploring reptile and amphibian life cycles with us this week. For our at-home activity, I want you to think about any reptiles and amphibians you've seen before, either outside in your community or even on screen. Where and when did you notice them? And what life cycle do you think you saw them in? Use clues like their physical characteristics, their location, and the time of year when you saw them to explain why you chose a certain life stage. Next, imagine examples of the life stages of reptiles and amphibians from eggs to adult. Use your creative side to draw them into the correct habitats. Thank you so much for exploring with us and good luck. <laughs>